All right, so um, I'm a little bit more calm now when, before I started recording this video because I was uh, I was a little bit more irate before I started, so I want to at least try to cool down and you know get all my thoughts together. Um, after today, my 50-50 no money spent Eagles theme team, I'm officially retiring them. I'm officially done with Mutt after today. It's a wrap. I'm I'm done. You know what I mean? And I owe it all to Clint Oldenburg. Clint Oldenburg of EA Sports, the gameplay creative director. I owe it all to you. Clint, I remember seeing your face back in Madden 25 when EA was doing the whole Ignite engine, breaking it down and, you know, it, it explaining to us what the Ignite engine means and all the um the 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 the, the, the thoughts, the knowledge, the intelligence that the Ignite engine was supposed to harness and all this other stuff that, you know, Man 25 was supposed to be because the, at that time that was supposed to be next gen. That was cutting edge technology, quote unquote. So the Ignite engine was really supposed to be the defining moment for Madden per se. I will tell you this. It is not aged well. It definitely has not aged well. We're on PS5 Series X Madden right now, right? The zones have always been something that has. It always has been something that could be tweaked and make stronger and made more sense, more knowledgeable. You know what I mean? And I owe that to I owe that to Rex when he was still here. I really owe that to him. Rex Dixon, of uh, well, former um, EA Sports employee, Rex Dixon, I owe it to him for you know at least making madden somewhat decent it still had its shortcomings but madden 17 which i saw that video i showed how dbs interacted in zones and stuff like that they really played how they were supposed to but once he left we started seeing where everybody else's mind was at whenever the creative director um at the time wasn't there if i said that right but we all know who the new creative director was once rex stepped away and that was clint odenberg we now see what Madden has turned into. We we now see that. Okay. So let me just start at the top of the list, right? The zones have been abysmal. The zones have been terrible. I, I will say that the zones have been God awful, you know, especially in mud, because this happens everywhere, but I see it the most in mud. You know, I, I remember when Rex was there, he had, he had um, thresholds for different players. And if they hit a certain threshold, then they played to their highest ability. I remember if player recognition was to a certain threshold, I think he had set to like 90 or 95. If they, if I, I think if they broke the 90 threshold for play recognition, then, you know, your guys are going to be on top of their plays and stuff like that. You had nothing to worry about at that point. And I remember that, you know what I'm saying? And I, that, 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 that was something that you had to, you had to take an account of whenever you were dealing with certain people because ratings mattered at that time. It wasn't about abilities and stuff like that. I mean, they had abilities, but it wasn't that focused on up until we got to this point where we are now. So with that being said, you know, zones, zone coverage, man coverage, play recognition, awareness, that all mattered once upon a time. We're looking at this now and now it's being masked behind abilities. Is being masked behind X factors now. Now it's it's a roll of the dice whether or not your team is going to play worth something or they're not. You know, when I look at a lot of these plays, I'm getting beat by, and most of the time it's just money plays that I'm getting beat by. You know what I'm saying? You can't cover everything, and I I understand that. I understand you can't cover everything. You have to give up something, but I I tend to disagree when I see people running stuff like man Mike Blitz 3 and they're pressing their guys and I got speedy wide receivers out to the side and they pretend like they can't bump past that or slide past that each time they do it because you shouldn't be giving that every time because if I'm not mistaken that each play was supposed to be different that was a slogan once upon a time that Madden had each play will not look the same or will not be the same if I'm not mistaken that was one of your slogans back in the day if I'm correct but I look and every time I turn around, a guy can be able to run one play that's supposed to be stopping my defense cold, which it doesn't. I'm able to find a way around it. But it's a shame that, you know, when it comes to running man, if I have guys that run man, y'all pretend like one cut and that's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? But back to the zone coverage. 
a lot of guys when they're running deep posts, I I know to back them up. I know to put the uh put the seams uh 20 between 20 25 maybe 30 yards and back them up and over the top and all these adjustments i know that but the problem lies when i'm watching my guys just sit back there in their zones the guys running right behind them and their play recognition and their awareness is high i'm watching them let the post go by them and they just throw the ball right over their head and then react after and i mean after the ball is between 10 to 5 yards away from the wide receiver that can catch it and he'll score a touchdown and then my guy will react super late as if this guy is a silver card or a gold card or some some low budget elite card I've watched my guys do that all the time I can't cover everything I understand that you don't want AI playing everything to their highest ability I understand that you want there to be some sort of user user interface some sort of user ability to play on defense i understand that but what you're not going to do is you're not going to cheat me out of my high tier players out of their abilities out of their ratings you're not going to cheat me out of that and make them seem like they're less of a player than they really are i have brian dawkins back there for god's sake this is a maxed out powered up brian dawkins i have seen him completely just not react to anything that is near him I have to click on him in order to make him react. I might be covering something else that I know that he's going to throw somewhere on the seams. I'm covering that, but there's a post route going across. If it's not Brian Dawkins, then I got Ed Reese over there. He's not maxed all the way out. He's maybe one tier behind from getting maxed all the way out, but he has the play, rec play recognition, awareness, and the zone ability. Not ability, ability, but I'm saying he can play his zone to the point where if something comes near him, he's on that. But I've watched them every time on a deep post. I've watched them with their back turned. Don't even make no kind of movements. Don't square up. Don't strafe. No nothing. I've watched them do this from time and time and time again. And I'm sick of it. I'm tired of that shit. Honest to God. Hand to God. If I'm lying, I'm dying. I'm sick of it. I'm straight up sick of it. I'm tired of it, bro. I'm so tired of it. I've, I've played against a guy. And I'll probably make a video separately on this later just to entail it more. But I played against a guy. And I, I kid you not. Deep post again. Told my guys play over the top. As far as I'm concerned, that inside, outside, underneath, over the top bullshit doesn't even work. As far as I'm concerned, that shit does not work. Because anytime I tell them to play over the top, meaning that they should literally be watching shit over the top or play over the top of anything, just watch anything over the top, they don't do it. You know what I'm saying? And they don't give you a whole lot of um whole lot of clearance or a whole lot of clarity about how that works. But whatever, go off, sis. So so I'm I'm looking and I watched. Either it was Palomalu or I had Ed Reed sitting back there. One of the two. Mind you, the guy was no more than five yards away from him behind the guy in the deep blue. My safety in the deep blue. Palomalu. I think he's I think he was maybe two away from getting maxed out. But he can play it if if need be. He's there to play it. He was five yards away from that guy who ran behind him on the deep post and he didn't even react. And I think I had an ability on him where I think it was like deep outside knockout or some shit. Deep zone uh knockout outside or whatever. But anything outside the numbers, he would have did it. This is literally, I think this is either inside or outside. I forget. But either way, he was back there. He could have reacted to that. But literally, he just sat there, watched him run past him, and there's nothing I can do. I can't click on him to, to go back there and make him play that. I have to just sit there and just watch him just completely just dumb out and not know what's behind him. You mean to tell me that a DB's vision is not wide enough for him to see what's coming in front of him? Do you mean to tell me that they're not smart enough to figure out what's going on in front of them? Why is it every time when I look and, and a guy's going into a deep blue or, or any type of zone at all, why is his back turned 99% of the time? Clint, do you not understand that a DB does not have his back turned unless and only if the guy that he's covering is about to run past him? That's the only time where his back is turned to the QB at all or his back is turned at all is when he's guarding that. Other than that, DBs are squared up, ready to make a move whenever they need to. Why don't you understand that? You have put out several updates, Clint, and not one time have you fixed the logic between DBs and 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 coverages. You you you. I think you might have fixed the the logic in zones, but you can't even tell. People are still able to just burn these zones up with no problem. I don't see nobody reacting. I don't see anybody cheating over. No nothing. I don't see any of that, Clint. All I run is zone. I don't trust man enough to run it because y'all make it seem like every time one guy can make one small cut, no matter what my no matter what my ratings is, you make him seem like he can't he can't keep up off of one cut. But he has the quickness, he has the he has acceleration, he has the speed to keep up. But y'all make one cut seem like it's detrimental to everybody. I never understood that. 
So all I run is zone. The only thing I trust is zone because at that time, whenever they threw inside of a zone or they threw inside that little pocket right there, I could trust my guys to come down and make a play. But I can't do that no more now because you're taking a logic between DBs and zones and made it to where everybody just sits there and looks so stupid. Ratings don't even matter. If I don't have an ability on him to say that he's supposed to play that zone to his highest ability, then I'm then I'm better off just I'm better off just play, uh, watching paint dry. Better off just watching paint dry at that point because they're not going to play the zones like they're supposed to, given that they have the ratings to say they're supposed to say otherwise. It's ridiculous. So. Aside from DBs, the safeties and corners not playing their, their positions, let's talk about how you've neutered linebackers. Let's talk about that. And I can't stand the man community. I just, I just, I don't like the man community at all. Like, I just can't stand it. You know, I remember back in, what was this? What was this, Madden 17? Yeah, Madden 17 was when it was, it was at its worst because even I did it. I remember Madden 17 where I think if you had um, – I remember Keekly. Keekly was one. I had Scooby Wright on one of them. This was Mutt, and of course, you know, Boone is playing the franchise. But you know, you could have a linebacker survey the field like as like as if the actual safety. If you threw anything near him, it was going to get picked off. I already knew because that's what I did, and a lot of other people did. But at the same as that time, you you could you could make him choose because the linebacker couldn't cover everything. There was times where a guy would take a linebacker and he'll cover everything in the middle, but something on the side was open or he had to cover something, but he let, he, he tried to cover the middle, but something else was wide open. Or there'd be times I would put a crossing route between him and make him choose left or right, whichever one you want to do, better make a decision. And whichever one you pick, you got to live with that. Cause this, this one is open. So I knew how to, I knew how to get around it at times. I knew how to get around it, but the man community complained about that so much Regards that we've had people like Bobby Wagner, we had people like Patrick Willis, you had people like Erlacher, you had people like um, Keekly, you had people like um, um, in, insert multi-dimensional Ryan Shazier. There we go. You had somebody like him. You had multi-dimensional linebackers that could do either or run, uh, um, stuff the run, or they could play the coverage. You had you had linebackers that played that, but the Mac community complained about that so bad to the point where. I forgot what man they did this in. I don't know if it was 20 or 21, whichever the two. But I remember they took it to the point where it might have been back further than that. But they took it to the point where the linebackers now, the only thing they're good for is really stuffing the run. They don't they don't pick off anything unless it's being thrown directly to them. They can't jump. They can't. They can barely swat anything down. They're not athletic. They're not nothing. They are only good for stopping the run and getting tackles. That's it. That is the only thing that they're good for is, is that's it. They're not good for stopping the pass. They won't pick nothing off. They won't jump up there. They won't get athletic. No, nothing. They won't do anything. And that is thanks to the man community. And that's thanks to you, Clint, because for somebody who played in the NFL, and I'm pretty sure watches the NFL day in and day out, you mean to tell me that there aren't any linebackers that, or at least linebackers that played that weren't multidimensional? Are you serious? There is no way you cannot prove to me that a linebacker should not be able to play the pass because you have linebackers that are smart like that. You have them. But no, in, in, in your case and in the man community's case, linebackers shouldn't be able to do that. No, mm -mm. no, they shouldn't be able to do that. So, Clint, you listen to them, you give them what they want. And so now whenever guys are making these ridiculous passes that are going right over my head, my, my, my linebacker won't do anything. And vice versa. I can make passes on linebackers that I wouldn't even make uh, uh, four or five years ago. I know I would make that pass. I know better to make a pass like that because I pick it off. But what you do is to counteract that. What you do, you think you slick. You decide to put in the sub linebacker specialty and put a safety there. So in, 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 was it formations like nickel and dime? I can have a safety there and I could use that safety to do what a linebacker used to do, but you allow a safety to do it. As far as I'm concerned, anybody sitting in that linebacker position, you should be neutered just like the rest of them. That don't 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 meet people halfway with this shit. Where oh yeah, let's let's say let's say a linebacker can't do this, but if you put if you put a safety here, he he can he can do what a linebacker used to do, but a linebacker can't do that. I'm sorry, no Clint, no, that's not how you do that. Cause see now you got the community split. You got people that want that, and you got people that don't want that. You don't know what the community wants. You don't know what a good football game looks like. You, you have completely just ruined the series. You don't deserve to be a gameplay director, Clint. Now, let's get into something a little bit deeper. Let's look at this whole tackling 
this whole tackling horizon. Let's let's look at that for a second. I want you to understand something, Clint. When you're when you're tackling somebody, I've I've never played a day or I've never played a day of organized sports, football. I've played pickup games with my friends, but I've watched enough football to the point where I'm knowledgeable or at least have some sort of sense about what football is, what it's supposed to do, what positions do that, what the insides are outs, and I can learn if I possibly wanted to. But I am I am I'm 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 literate enough, literate enough to know how the game of football is supposed to be played. Okay? Now let's keep it moving forward. Tackling, Clint. You know, it was bad enough that in what was that? 17 and down when we had the warp tackling. That was bad. That was just awful. Spamming eggs to get to tackles. That shit was just terrible. So now we got away from spamming that now. Now we're on to the point where we have we have now Superman diving tackles that go straight for ankles. Clint. Clint, 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 Clint. Why on God's green earth do you feel like that kind of tackling is textbook. Explain that to me, Clint. Explain that to the people who ask the same question that I'm asking. Who in their right mind thinks that that is excellent tackling? That is perfect tackling. That's great tackling. Who in their right mind thinks that that's great tackling? But you know what's crazy too? The community is not going to say nothing about that because that's the only crutch that they have to lie on. That's the only thing that they have. Because there's been several times where I could have broke loose on somebody, but because he is diving five, 10 yards away and you warp him to my ankles, you give it to him every time. That is a risky form of tackling. Do you not realize how fast people's feet are moving? You can't do that, Clint. You're not able to do that. You give them that because you want them to have some sort of outing if they can't make a hit stick tackle. Clint, I don't know if you're aware, but we have come from the days where if you couldn't make that tackle, that was on you. If you couldn't put yourself in the right position to make that tackle, that was on you. You, If you whiffed, you whiffed. It is what it is. You make, you pay for that price. You wanted to make that tackle, you missed. Oh, well, you gave up a touchdown or a first down, whatever. We're from that era, Clint. But apparently you aren't. Because if you were, you wouldn't be giving people a crutch to lie on anytime something like that happens. These pursuit angles are terrible. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a guy run a, run a toss and I've watched my guy literally run straight into the blocker just to try to stop the running back because he's not paying attention to what's in front of him. Nobody in their right mind, anybody, Clint, please understand this. Nobody in their right mind would just run straight into a blocker because he's trying to get to the running back. Nobody does that, Clint. The pursuit angles are terrible. I've, ne- I've, I've never seen somebody just run straight into a blocker and then fall and then be like, oh, well, I tried to make the stop, but a guy tripped me. Like, Clint, that's not, that's not defense. That's not football, Clint. I don't understand why you don't think that this is wrong. We have shown you several clips day in and day out, but you don't do nothing but ignore. If, if it ain't something that's game breaking, then that's when you respond. But if it's not anything that's game breaking, you're not going to say a word. You'll block somebody before you even respond to anything that we found wrong with the game. And that and that that's that's terrible. This is why I support indie devs. This is why I support people like Access Football, Canuck, uh, not Canuck, but Modus or Maximum Football, uh, Sunday Rivals, any football game that is just now starting out, and they want our feedback. I re- I respect them. I hold them to a higher light than I do of you, Clint. I do that for a reason because they'll listen. You won't. You'll listen to the community before you listen to anybody else with cold hard facts about how football should be played. You won't listen to them. The indie devs will listen to us. They'll put forth the effort. Look at Axis Football. They have put in so many, so much time and effort in their animations to make sure that 22, when whenever 22 or the next iteration comes out, that is better than the last one. Clint, you are a you are a joke. You are a you are a of of you're a fool. Try not to curse, but you are a fool, Clint. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing, Clint. You have put out several updates, might I mind you. Let me reiterate, several updates. We're almost to where 23 is going to drop soon. You put out several updates and not one of them has fixed the way DBs and how defense is working. If it ain't something that's game breaking, you don't fix it. You feel like it's okay. People have to adjust. What is there to adjust to, Clint? You can't adjust to none of this stuff. There's not enough money plays. There's not enough impenetrable defenses that you can put in front of me that are making me pick this game back up. You are a joke, Clint Oldenburg. You are a flat-out joke. 
Now, let's get into something else. Because, and, and I, I feel like everything that you've done, excuse me, excuse me, I feel like everything that you have done, Clint, you were a lineman in the NFL, correct? You played with the Jets, if I'm not mistaken. Three, two or three games, if I'm not mistaken. You might have started, you might not have. I don't really care. The whole point is you joined football and played as a lineman for X amount of years up until you got to the NFL. So if anything, Clint, lineman should be your forte. That should be the best thing you should know about football and should be able to reiterate that back in the Madden. That should be the best thing you know. But like I said, I see all the time guys missing blocks. I've seen guys just turn and go the other way. I've seen times when my fullback is supposed to be leading me to daylight. He instead just goes somewhere else, and I got to follow him so I can get some daylight. But there's a guy in front of him. He just turns, goes in the other direction, or just completely misses him all in, all in one. And I get hit, or I, might get, or I might fumble, or I don't get the first down, or whatever the case is. But blocking is something that you should specialize in, Clint. Well, I mean, well, you kind of do, you know what I'm saying? That's a bar. <laughs> but, you know, blocking is something you should specialize in. Let's look on the defense for, for a second. You know, whenever I've seen players like Lamar, right, Lamar Jackson, right? Now, anytime I've seen this several times, and a lot of people can back me up on this, anytime when the pocket is forming, right, and obviously it's starting to form and it's starting to go around the sides, right? Now, you obviously you can't roll out. So the only thing you can do is just dart forward. That's the only thing you can do, especially if there's an opening in the middle. 10 times out of 10, whoever's on the outside or whoever's on those blocks cannot get off in time to make that tackle. So why in every time in Madden, any time I'm about to take my quarterback and run straight up the middle, especially if I got a gap to run through, why is it every time I do that, whoever's on those blocks, they happen to come off and match speed immediately? Why is that, Clint? Nobody's has said a word about that because they're using that to their power to make sure that scrambling quarterbacks don't get away. And your answer to that is you're going to say, well, just put on, um, put on, uh, what's the name of that? That stupid, uh, that stupid ability, uh, not fast break. Um, I, f I forget the name of that damn ability, but put that ability on and you won't have any issues, uh, taking off, you know, he'll, he'll get off in a heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? You'll just tell me to put an ability on and say, all right, well, yeah, that should do you right there. Like Clint, that's, that's not, that's a band aid. That's a band aid fix for something that should be hard coded into the game. No lineman should be catching me when I run through the middle like that. Or if I or if I decide to find a gap and run straight through it, no lineman should be catching me like that. I don't give a damn if it's arcade, simulation, competitive, whatever the case is, Clint. This shit should not be happening all around. This game should not have more mishaps than it has of actual cool stuff that happens in the game that you would see in the NFL. There should not be more mishaps than that. It shouldn't be. You know what I'm saying? Now, let's look, now let's 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 also look at the run game. The run game, I I I got I got to admit, man, it, it's it's hit or miss. It's really hit or miss. It's either you're going to get good blocks and you breaking tackles or either you're going to get terrible blocks, not going to break any tackles. You might fumble. You got guys that won't block. You got guys that always double team block all the time. And 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 blocking again, I got to say is just very very underwhelming. It's very underwhelming. You know, I've seen guys going more double team blocks than anything. And then even then they can't break off the double team block to go block somebody else. You know what I mean? It's, it's real half-hearted how they block. So I've seen guys really just go up, nudge them, hope for the breath, hope breast, <laughs> hope for the best and then just go up to the next one. You know what I'm saying, Clint? Like, come on, dude. Like, you got to understand, fam. It, it, it don't work that way. It does not work that way. That's lazy. You know what I mean? So, like I said, let's go to let's go to receiving for a second, right? This is tight ends and wide receivers. Let's look at them for a second. Now, Clint, I don't know how much of football you watch because I'm really insulting your intelligence right now at this point because it's obvious that you don't know what real football looks like. Explain to me why it's okay for a guy to go up for a catch, right? He goes up. Cool. Let's think of Calvin Johnson, Andre Johnson, Randy Moss. You know what I'm saying? Julio. Julio in his prime. Let's look at those receivers, right? They live and die for the 50-50 ball. They want that. That's what they want. You put me in single coverage, that's your ass. Or Chad Johnson, him too. Chad Johnson said, you can put me in a phone booth with several DBs and I'm going to still tell you I'm wide open. I know y'all remember that. Now, explain to me how is this good defense when a guy goes up for a catch, right? He goes up for a catch, your DB doesn't jump. He goes up for a catch, right? Two hands, catch it, cool. But the DB just nudges me. He literally just takes his forearm and pushes me in midair. My guy just lets it go completely. Oh, I can't catch it. Oh, he, he pushed me. How is that good defense? 
explain me how that's good defense. You know, we have got to get away from 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 this whole dynamic of we pushing people in midair like that's good defense. We got to stop doing this shit where too many animations come up and we don't know who's going to win what. You know, you can time it all you want to, but who's to say that that animation is going to give you the right one? Who's to say? Who's to say that dice roll animation is going to be the one that you're looking for? You know, I, I'm tired of my guys not being able to jump. I'm tired of my guys diving all the time when they don't need to dive. I'm tired of QBs underthrowing guys when, when their rating says otherwise. I'm sick and tired of the shortcomings, Clint. You don't listen to nothing we tell you. You don't watch nothing we show you. You don't understand nothing, but you're quick to block somebody anytime somebody questions your ability to do your job. What does that say about you? Clint, that, that is a very cowardly way of handling your business. That is why people don't like you. That is why every time I go, every time I go to your page or you happen to post something, that's why people go at your neck the way that they do. Now, I will say this. I'm not a part of the mob where they disrespect your family and all this stuff. That's not cool. If you do that, yeah, I'm, I'm not with you on that. Only thing I'm talking about, Clint, is how bad you are at your job. You don't deserve to be a gameplay creative director. You don't. We need Rex back right now, but y'all didn't, y'all didn't piss Rex off. He's not coming back. But Clint, you are very awful at your job. You need to be demoted to do something else because you don't deserve to be a gameplay director when you constantly have these things popping up all the time and you choose to ignore it. What what leader ignores problems? You're not a leader, Clint. You're not a leader. You're not because anybody who's a leader will attack problems head on. Don't tell me you're prioritizing this and that. And OK, EA, um, I mean, what's that? Not EA Live. EA Play is canceled this year, right? Y'all didn't. Y'all, there, there's nothing going off EA Play. That's dead, right? That's more time for you to go in here and attack these problems head on. But Clint, you're so quiet about everything. Even if you are attacking some of this stuff, you don't say nothing to nobody. You don't even follow up with nobody and tell them that, hey, look, all right, well, we heard y'all complaints about this, that, and this, that, and the third. So this is what we decided to do. Y'all don't do nothing about that. The last time y'all said anything about anything was the franchise mode. And even then, franchise mode is still laughable. Franchise mode people are, are pissed because they're still not getting the support that they want. Franchise mode is dead. I hate to break it to you, but that shit is dying. That shit is dead. Franchise mode is, is slowly getting to be monetized until another form of ultimate team. I'm going to just tell y'all that now. That's just what it is. But that's that's another video. But like I said, Clint, man, Clint Oldenburg of EA Sports, you, you, you have lost me. You've lost me entirely as somebody who has tried to day in and day out give give you know try try to give you guys the benefit of the doubt and i know i shouldn't have because i've done that each year but i just feel like y'all can pull it together i feel like y'all can but next gen and even current gen i mean you know current gen as in uh, as in xbox one and the ps4 that's terrible and even the next gen iteration of it is terrible both have their terrible ways of football and clint you have not seen it you have just not have seen that the mad community is terrible the man community sucks. It, it is out of 100% is 90% of people who run money plays and, and, and manipulate the AI because that's what money plays are. They just manipulate the AI. It is 90% of people who run that and will point the finger back at you and say, you're trash, learn to adjust, or if you can't stop it, then you should just stop playing. You know, those players... And then you got the 10% that literally lab day in and day out don't rely on money plays and actually try to play the game for what it's worth and get shit on in return. This man community sucks. It's terrible. I never get the time I was in Reddit and I posted a lot of problems that Mad was doing. You should you just see people just downvoting me, downvoting, downvoting, downvoting. And they said Reddit is cancer, but you know, I just downvote, downvote, downvote. People downplaying me thinking it's a user issue, but I'm showing them footage about what's going on and quiet either crickets or they're just trying to find a way to to justify what's what was shown in that clip you know what I'm saying user blaming per se at this point I don't even I don't even want to play Madden to play my friends you know what I mean because the way how Madden is set up I can't even I can't really wholeheartedly enjoy a W against my friend or I can't even really take a loss in stride because I know the game cheated me somehow or it cheated him in some fashion or form I can't even really say I'm good at Madden because I might have did something to manipulate the AI to make it to where, oh, yeah, I beat him. He can't beat me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can't. There's nothing I can do about that. That's the part that kills me. I, I, I can't play Madden the same way I used to. I just can't. At this point, bro, Madden is dead to me. 
There's there, there's nothing you can do as far as as long as money plays, manipulate AI and defenses and DBs logic, the DB logic and all that other stuff. As long as that's not being corrected and fixed, I have no reason to pick a Madden ever again at this point. You know, I've, I've tried to you know not be competitive with it because you know when you try to get competitive with Madden, then that's when it'll tell you and show you that yeah, this is not a competitive game. You should just chill because they're gonna shit on you either way. So I try to play it for fun, but when I play it for fun, it it, it does nothing but show me how bad this game is in a nutshell that's really all it is so honestly at this point my theme team is retired i don't have no quarrels or i don't have any not quarrels but i don't have any ties to mutt right now at this point that no money squad spent i mean that no money spent squad is dead to me right now is well not right now but it's dead to me i don't have no quarrels or any any kind of effort to come back and play that because it's obvious to me that you guys don't fix legacy issues because dbs should not just be sitting around or having a back turn to the qb every time the ball snap so it's obviously that you don't know that i'm sick of the money plays i'm tired of having to go to youtube and look at a, a defense and make this make this adjustment make that adjustment and do this and do that in order to make your defense impenetrable but i got players all around the board that can play their position well but the game won't let them so like I said, man, that theme team, that's dead. I'm squashing that. I have no efforts. I have no desire to pick up Madden ever again. Clint Odenberg, I thank you. I thank you so much for your hard work. I thank you so much for everything you've done for this Madden game. I thank you so, so much. I hate it with every inch and every thread of my body and, and my being. And I hope that anybody else that sees this video feels the same way. And I will make sure that Clint Odenberg sees this video. I don't give a damn if he blocks me. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I'm going to make sure he sees this video and I'm going to make sure he feels around of every person underneath this video underneath this comment that comments underneath this video i'm gonna make sure that he feels the wrath of every person that sees this video i want him to understand you have done a poor work with madden and you will never make madden great like it was back then so thank you clint oldenburg i thank you for making me making me a fan that now hates Madden. I really appreciate you because that once upon a time in my life was pivotal. It was a pivotal point in my life. That's why I got started with football. But now because of you, I hate Madden now. And I thank you so much for that. Thank you so, so much for that, man. I can't thank you enough. And please let, let everybody in the comment section, comment section, let everybody, let Clint know how, how, how grateful you are for him uh, uh, ma making you feel about this man now. Let everybody know. I'll make sure I'll let you know, Clint. But um, yeah, I'm going to get up out of here, man. Everybody in the comment section, please make sure you drop your condolences to Clint Oldenburg. Let him know how much you thank him for the product we got out now. I really appreciate y'all, man. Love support y'all for showing the videos, man. I'm going to get up out of here. It's your boy, Jay Devine, and I'm signing out. Peace.